If you cannot be vulnerable with your woman, that woman ain't meant for you. Because, ladies, if this man is willing to express something that he's mentally going through and you're not giving him a safe space, you are not meant to be a wife. Because if you're using that moment against him by being vulnerable, that means you're insecure and you're weak and vice versa for you men. If a man learns something personable about a woman and uses that moment against her, that is a weak man. Welcome to the Don't Let That Go Over Your Head podcast, starring Q the Boss. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of Don't Let That Go Over Your Head podcast. They call me Q the Boss. Yes. I'm excited. Anytime we do this, I always get excited. And the reason why I get excited is because I love coming on every weekend and talking to you guys about a particular topic. Today, right, we want to talk about something very special. Today I'm asking a question, and I want y'all to be honest with yourselves. Would you date yourself? Would you date yourself? And I need you to be 100% honest. No lying, no pretending. No fronting. Would you date yourself? I'm asking the question. And the reason why I want to ask, right, because I believe that some people aren't dateable. I think they're very toxic. I think they think that their better daters are in relationships. It's good now. They think they're better than what they actually are. And the problem with that is when you think you're better than what you are, you tend to behave different. But let's have this conversation. If you are on the dating market and you are the opposite sex, would you date yourself? Do you think that you're a good mate? Right? And I'm asking this question to be honest. I genuinely believe that a lot of people aren't good dateable. They're not good daters. They're just not. And they lie to themselves. And that's the problem when you have people who are in a space right now but it's all about posing and excessively being something they're not. It is easier to lie to yourself than it is to tell yourself the truth. So I'm asking everyone this question today. Would you date yourself? Right? I'm going to be honest. And today I'm going to answer the question, but I'm going to go through my live and I'm going to see what you guys say first. Everybody engaged today, I want you to be honest. Someone just said no. Right? Someone said I would. Right? And, and, and when you look at it from just economics, we're talking about mentally also. There are a lot of people who aren't mentally good to be dating, right? Because they're very traumatic. They went through a lot of trauma. They've been through some bad relationships. And they bring it with them throughout the rest of their relationship. So now what happens is this. They start looking for exactly what they are. There is a, there is a, a particular bond. It's called trauma bonding. And people trauma bond. And what I mean by trauma bond is they've been through a lot. They look for people who, who accommodate what they've been through, ultimately never getting over things. And that's a major issue. You have to just accept the fact that either A, you're dateable, or B, you're not. Right? Let's just call it what it is. Are you dateable? Are you the wife material, ladies? Gentlemen, are you the husband material that you want to say you are? What makes you wifey material? What makes you husband material? I'm going to go into this statement and say this. I genuinely believe that a lot of people believe that they do more in relationships than they actually do. And the reason why I say that is because if I sat their mates down, most people don't love their mates the way they would like to be loved. Most people lo love their mates the way they want to be loved. So look at this narrative. You have a woman, you have a man. The woman believes that loving someone a certain way is normal, and the man believes that loving someone a certain way is normal. So therefore, they never get to learn how to truly love each other because in retrospect, they love each other the way they want to love each other. So you love your mate the way you think she want to be loved, ultimately never feeling loved because that's not how she feel loved. But what you do is you love her the way you want. So ask this question. Do you think your wifey material ladies? And gentlemen, do you think your husband material, right? Do you think your husband material? 
right? So someone said yes. But I'm asking the question. I keep seeing the yeses and noes, but I'm asking you why. Why do you think that you're husband and wife material? Don't tell me because I make money. But again, when you talk about relationships, a lot of people don't ever bring up the topic, right? It's called emotional maturity. A lot of people lack emotional maturity, meaning when things aren't going the way they would like, this is what really represents, are you worthy? Are you good enough to be in a relationship? Why do I say that? Because there are people right now who date people and genuinely believe just because they can provide and that's all they can do, they're healthy people to be with. There are a lot of people who are very toxic people, right? And this is how they behave. When things are not going the way they would like, they automatically distance and insult each other. That is not someone that's considered dateable. That is not someone you want to be in a relationship with. That is not someone you want to attach yourself to. You want to be with someone that, whether we're winning or losing, I'm going to still respect you. I always bring this topic up, and I want y'all to hear this, right? Listen to this. Ladies, if a man loses his economical situation, right, that shouldn't hence be the reason why you start disrespecting him. Because if a man, right, most cases, a man has to earn a woman's respect, right? But in most cases, a woman automatically feels entitled to a man giving economics. But a man that genuinely understands that money is a necessity for a woman to feel security, right? But a necessity for a man to feel security is respect. So what I'm getting at is a lot of the times when, when, when money or women and men start having problems, a lot of men will still continue to pay bills, right? But a lot of times, ladies, when you get mad, the man's respect goes out the window. So what I'm getting at is a lot of times, these people that believe that they're very good dateable or very good at dating or can be in a good relationship, they're really not. Because again, if I understand what is the totality of a woman's necessities and I understand what is the totality of a man's necessities. We talk about necessities, right? There's a difference between wants and needs. A man needs respect to feel like he should play in his roots because I'm going to go on record and say this. A man don't go where they're tolerated. Men go where they're celebrated. Let me say that one more time. Men don't go where they're tolerated. Men, say, let me hold on. Men don't go where they're tolerated. Men go where they're celebrated. So if a man isn't feeling like he's being celebrated, a man will tend to not plant his roots. So what I'm getting at is celebration is the, the words, the nouns, and the verbs you use. And a lot of times when we get mad, we tend to call each other out each other's names, therefore creating a very toxic and unhealthy environment. And a lot of times, men and women genuinely believe that they're better in relationships they, than they are. Because a, a good dater don't keep a ledger on how much or what they do for their mate. When I hear a woman or a man brag about what they do, I'm like, if you love the person, you're supposed to be doing it. Why do you want credit for doing something that you feel you should be doing in a relationship? If I genuinely believe that I should be providing, then I'm going to go hard to provide. Not saying that a woman shouldn't respect me for doing it, but understanding that that should be a role because I know that's a necessity of a woman. A woman needs provision. I always say this on record. There are more stability diggers than there are gold diggers. More women get labeled gold diggers than there are. There are more stability diggers. Women need stability in order to feel comfortable. Because again, as I said, men don't go where they're tolerated. They go where they celebrated. And women tend to plant their roots where they feel the most comfortable at. Where there's the most provision and stability. Is she a gold digger? No. But that's her natural right essence of a woman. When men don't understand that and you're trying to change the catalyst of what a man and a woman is, then you're going to continuously have problems. As I said before, more women get labeled gold diggers than they actually are. A lot of women aren't gold diggers, but they know that they need stability. The worst woman on earth could be the woman that says something like, I don't care about how much a man makes, and then start dating him and then complaining about the money that he don't make. Because what happens is you started lying to yourself. Damn. That's what happened. You told yourself that I can date a man that don't make a lot of money, but then you started dating him or a man that can take care of himself, and you told yourself you can do this. But then as you started dating him, your, your origin of a woman started coming out. Your security felt tainted. You didn't feel protected. So therefore, the words started coming out because you did not vividly see that as a man. And that's the truth. 
But a lot of times women say things like, I can be with a guy who makes a lot less money than me, knowing that they can't. A lot of them cannot. They cannot. And it's not, oh, 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 what I think is what I know. There are women that can genuinely be with a man that makes a lot of less money than them. But in most cases, when a woman makes a lot less money than a man, they tend to emasculate him. Because in today's society, we have allowed economics to be the totality of how much we respect people. And that's why you have issues in society in itself. Money shouldn't give you the, the, the metric of how much you respect somebody. His or her ability to provide shouldn't be the metric of how you respect somebody. I'm going to tell you on record, I want you to hear this really well. The strongest woman is a woman that makes good money but still has the ability to submit to her husband. Let me say that again. The strongest woman is the woman who makes her own money but still have the ability to submit to her husband. And when I say the word submission, I don't mean a woman who's a slave to a man. That is sick if you even think like that. What I mean submission is the willingness to allow him to lead. It shows strength when you are a strong woman, career-oriented, degrees and everything, but still understand that you're still comfortable in your feminality. That is a very strong woman. That is a very strong woman, right? And a man that's strong understands that I know I have to provide, but at times you can still be vulnerable and allow yourself to feel as a normal human would. A man can cry at times and still be an alpha man. Right? Because here's the narrative. We've been told that it is weak to feel. Vulnerability is actually strength. But yet and still we believe that strength is measured in holding back feelings. And I can deal with the anger of myself and then ultimately you explode. This is what we don't talk about. This is why you have a lot of men with a lot of mental issues. Because they've been told to hoard feelings. It is okay to feel. It is normal to express yourself. But again, it took me years to learn this. Why? Because I, was, I come from an environment that told me that it is not healthy to allow people to see your vulnerabilities. Well, what happens is when you're isolated, right? Now, notice the word I said, isolated. You'll go into your room and then you explode. In most cases, people that hoard feelings tend to take it out on loved ones even more. Because they're hurting inside, so they hurt the people they love the most. We're having a real discussion here, guys. When you learn that, would you date yourself is the question today, right? Would you entertain yourself? If the version of who you are today walked up to you today and said, hey, let's go on a date, would you even entertain that conversation? Would you even, would you, imagine if your daughter or son brought you home, ladies. Your son brought you home, ladies. What would you feel? If your son brought the identical version of you home, would you be comfortable with that situation? We're rubbing our hands. Birdman, right? What are we doing? Ladies, if your son brought you home, would you be comfortable with him dating you? A lot of people going to cap. I'm a good woman. You're a good mother. You're not a good woman. Damn. I'm a good man. No, you are a good father. You're not a good husband. Damn. It's a big difference, ladies and gentlemen. There are two different roles. Being a good wife, it don't mean that you're a good mother. You can be a great mother, but be a horrible wife. And vice versa. You can be a horrible husband, but a great father. Because we have to understand that there are two different roles. And you have to understand both roles in order to be successful at both roles. Just because you can provide a, a safe environment for your children don't mean that your wife come home and feel safe every day. Let me say that again. Just because you can provide an environment where your kids are safe don't mean your wife come home and feel safe every day. Just because you can, you can protect your children, ladies, and, and, and protect the home or, or nurture the children don't mean you're a good nurturing wife. Let me say that again. Men, just because you can go to work and provide a stable environment for your children don't mean that your wife comes home and feel like the environment is stable enough for her or your girlfriend or your fiance. And ladies, just because you can nurture your children don't mean you're a nurturing wife to your husband or your boyfriend or your mate. It is two different things. 
But again, we're going to say, I'm good to my children, but your man don't feel such, ladies. I'm good. I provide for my children, but your wife don't feel such, men. They don't feel that way. But again, if you have these conversations, a lot of people are getting their feelings. When you must learn that there are two different roles in order to acquire certain levels in life, you have to understand it. If you want to be married, ladies, you should know how to become a wife. Man, if you want to be a husband, you should learn how to become a husband. And how do you do that? You go around people who are husbands and wives, they'll give you a, a real sense of reality. Ladies, if you're going into a marriage believing that, the, the, the remember that day, right? You walk down that aisle and say, I do, and you party after. If you believe that's going to be the totality of your marriage, you should never get married. Because we call that completely the honeymoon stage. And the honeymoon stage don't last forever, ladies and gentlemen. The best relationships are the ones who understand that we are in this permanently. We love each other, win, lose, or draw. I'm not going to quit on you. You don't quit on me. I won't give up. I won't complain about what you aren't. I'll become what you aren't. I'll fight for you when you won't fight for yourself. I'll, I'll build with you even when you're lazy. I'm going to fight for you. That's the true essence of love. Well, let me guess. Society tells you that you supposed to find the perfect human. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be searching till eternity, finding and looking for the perfect individual. Because I'm gonna tell you something, your standards are constantly changing. Here's the dilemma. Let's say you're in a relationship five, 10, 15, 20 years. Let's even make it lower, every three years. Every three years, people change. People change. Who you are at 23, you won't be at 26. Would you agree? Who you at 26, you won't be at 29. Who you at 29, you won't be at 32. Right? Who you at 32, you won't be at 35. Who you at 35, you won't be at 38. This is how humans constantly change. And the problem is, when you're changing, you expect the person that you're dating to change on the same time as you. Everyone is on their own timeline. But the fact of the matter, as long as the love didn't change and the person is still respecting everything about me, I can definitely stay there. When you realize that how much you love someone, right? Is my mental, my mental space safe? That's one question men you should always ask. Dude, see, a lot of times, I'm going to go on record and say this, a lot of women learn things about you, right? And they use it against you in anger. If a woman can protect her mouth with, with anger, then you found yourself a queen, brother. And if a man can figure out how to keep it in his pants, even though he sees other things, then you found yourself a king. And why do I say that? Because we're in a world where you're taught to, to exit before you tell to, you're taught to enter. Let me say that again. We're in a world now in relationships, we're taught how to exit, but we're not taught how to stay in it. Let me say that again. We're in a world that promotes exiting more than working together. We're in a world that tells you she's not better, good enough for you and you're not good enough for her, so let's let it go. We don't, we're not taught how to work it out. And this is the dilemma we have in 2024 also. The calendars may change, but the people are still playing the same game. In order to change the culture, we have to change the culture. If the mental aspect don't change, you're going to continue to get the poor results. Men, stop crying about having children with women you chose to get intimate with, unprotected or protected. Ladies, you look crazy talking about your... Let me say this again. Men, stop crying about the woman you have children with that you've chosen to have children with because if you didn't choose to have children with her, you should have never got intimate with her. And ladies, it says a lot about you telling your child or calling your child's father a bum when you allow this man to, to have intimacy with you and go all the way to pregnancy and have a child with this man. What you should do is up your standards and learn from your mistake if you want to call it that. But while calling this man a mistake, you're basically calling your child a mistake. By calling this woman a mistake, you're basically calling your child a mistake. And that's what we don't understand. Imagine a child living in a house with a mother always saying things like, you're going to be just like your daddy. Imagine a household where a man telling his daughter, you're going to be just like your mother. 
You see the mental illness where we have the trauma? But when we have these conversations, we don't want to have these conversations. We, we, we negate the realities and we promote our insecurities. A lot of people are very insecure because in most times, having these conversations will always create negativity and create a negative space. Men, and I'm going on record and say this. If you cannot be vulnerable with your woman, that woman ain't meant for you. Because ladies, if this man is willing to express something that he's mentally going through and you're not giving him a safe space, you are not meant to be a wife. Because if you're using that moment against him by being vulnerable, that means you're insecure and you're weak. And vice versa for you men. If a man learns something personable about a woman and uses that moment against her, that is a weak man. That man has no strength because strength is measured in anger. By being angry and using it as an excuse to hurt, I mean you're weak. You're weak. I do not want to hear as a grown-up, you know what, I was upset. You still put your hands on that woman. You still said words to that man that hurt him. You cannot use anger as a, an excuse. It's a scapegoat. It can't be a scapegoat for the rest of your life. We allow this to be a normal. We've normalized poor behaviors. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of men that are very toxic, but there are also a lot of women who are just as toxic or worse. We're toxic. We learn how to create toxic homes, toxic environments. I have a question. Why that every time a man and a woman separate, they have to be at war? Why? Every time a man and a woman separate, why do they have to always be at war? Why? We didn't work out, right? You said that I wasn't good enough for you, right? So if you know I'm not good enough for you, why do I have to be your enemy? Ladies, you say things to the men like I can do better, but yet and still you should be going on getting better, but not being mad at the person you thought you could do better than. Let me say that one more time. I don't think y'all heard me. Ladies. If you say you can do better than this man and you leave this man, why are you mad at the fact that y'all broke up? It wasn't for you. It didn't work. It's okay. But here's the dilemma. Now that we're not together, we have to be enemies. And that's what life is all about now. Being each other's enemy. Ladies, I don't want to fight with you no more. I'm tired of fighting my sisters. I think it takes a weak brother to fight a woman. Since the beginning of the time we said this, that men don't fight women, but yet still men still fighting women. I watch social media and all you hear is women ain't this and men ain't this and women ain't this and men ain't that. Ladies and gentlemen, work with yourself and get out your insecurities. It's okay. Damn, we all got our flaws. Ladies, I'm going on record. You're going to get mad. Stop asking for things you can't bring to the table. You want a six-figure man with a welfare attitude. Damn. I'm going to say that again. You want a six-figure man with a welfare attitude. You want a high-value man with low-value morals. You want an old-school man with modern ways. Ladies, that don't make no damn sense. Let's get out of our feelings and get in reality. Men, you want a woman with a perfect body, but it just had a big old baby by you. And you expect her not to have stress marks or anything, nothing else in between. You're living in a fairy tale world, baby. Of course, she's getting older. This is normal. It is impossible for a woman to have a perfect body after having children. We gotta stop watching celebrities. Celebrities have given you an outlook on false reality. The perfect shape, the perfect body, right? The perfect nose, the perfect lips. Where does that exist in reality, right? How about the perfect mentality on how to be a good wife? How about the perfect mentality on how to be a good husband? How about the perfect mentality on how to be a good father? How about the perfect mentality on how to be a good mother? Right? This is the conversations we need to change to. But look at what we do. We talk about all the things that don't matter. 
So I ask you on record, everybody, would you date yourself? Would you date yourself? Would you? Soon as things don't go the way you want, you don't even know how to control your anger. I had a lady, I'm going on record and say this, right? One of my sisters, good woman, black girl, and I'm going to say this. She said to me, I don't have to date a black man, I can go to a white man. And I said, sister, that white man ain't used to your mouth. And the moment he start dating you, the way you talk, that white man gonna hold ass. Damn. Listen to this again. It's a black girl with a, with a, with a sister mouth. And I know y'all know what I mean by that. I know what I mean by that. She got a mouth of a, a demon. Told me straight up, I can go to a white man. And I know for a fact a white man will treat me better. I looked at her and I said, sister, I don't think it's the color of the man. I think it's the fact that you can't control your emotional maturity. I think that when things don't go the way you want, the way you speak, I think any man will be turned off by that. So ladies, if you, th you don't believe that you need to work on yourselves, then you, you're in a fairy tale world. When I play this game, right, on this podcast, I play back and forth. I'm, not, I'm fair. I'm not pro-man, I'm not pro-woman, I'm pro-truth. I don't care who get in their feelings. Sometimes you might come on his live and be like, he's talking about women, but yet and still you don't see a couple of seconds ago, I was talking about my men. I'm fair. Everybody can get it. Because I'm going to tell you something. If, if my son and my daughter get into a fight, I'm, I'm busting both of them behind because they shouldn't be fighting. That's the reality. We're not going to do this no more over here. This is why we can't fix the problem, right? We toxic as hell. Ladies, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to keep it honest with you. And I think I'm a strong man, but I'm going to tell you something. Some of the things y'all say to men in anger, beyond hurt them to the point where they're not willing to tell you the truth. Some men do not run from relationships, but they create more problems in relationships because they'd rather you walk away than tell you. Some men don't have the heart to walk away from you, so they force you to walk away. Because you've hurt them too many times with your words. You hurt them. You say things that's too much. You OD. There's no level of reserve. And men, you got to be honest with yourself, right? You're meeting a woman who's been hurt. What you're going to do is this. You're going to cause more hurt, more trauma. But then you're going to blame society for the fact that men and women, how we behave, but yet and still we behave every bit of like it. We entertain it. Go look at those videos that's talking anti-men and anti-women and go see the views and likes and comments and all you see is men and women fighting. And the sad part about it, I'm going to go on record and say this, I don't care if women get mad. A lot of the times when women say things about men, a man will hear what, he's, what she's saying. But a lot of times, a woman will know the woman is wrong and still protect her. They will still protect them. And I'm going on record and say this. I don't care who get mad. A lot of women protect each other from their madness. We got to stop doing that. We got to stop doing that. Right? It's like, I'm going to show you something that women do. And let's be honest, ladies. Not saying you, ladies, but just being fair. In most cases, let's say you had 10 women. Let's say they have a friend wearing something that she's not supposed to wear. Right? How many women do you honestly believe out of 10 that will tell a woman she shouldn't be wearing that? How many out of 10 will be like, girl, you shouldn't be wearing that? Most women be like, girl, get them, and they talk about it behind the back. And I'm just going to be honest with what I see. So I'm asking, out of 10, she said, they said two. Two people. I, I, that's where I'm at with it. I think two women will tell her out of 10, right? Because women, I hate to say this, Sometimes y'all call us fake, but I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of women is fake. They mad phony, especially in friendships. They're very phony because they don't tell each other the truth. And this is why we're in a space right now where we're having problems. And men, stop getting hypersensitive when a man tell you about yourself. Right? What makes you a man when you're behaving? you talking about you're a man, but you get in your feelings as soon as a man tell you something. We got to be able to have these conversations. I'm not coming to assassinate you because of the fact that I'm telling you something that you need to fix. It's not a full-out fledged war. The man and woman war is not real. Right? We have to fight against each other. 
Come on, man. It's not insecure. It's not like kids. It's not like kids in the playground, right? The left side of the playground is yours. The right side of the playground is theirs. They have husbands and wives right now living in homes, or boyfriend and girlfriends living in homes right now fighting against each other. But they say stuff like, I, I, I can do better. How the hell are you going to do better when you don't even know how to control your mouth? Brother, how are you going to be better when you can't even uh, keep a stable job? How are you going to do better? When, when you move on to the next woman, right, she's going to complain about your economical situation. Why? Because a woman needs provision. She needs stability. It's not the abnormal sense of a woman. This is, their, this is how they are. They need it. It's the makeup of a woman. In most cases, most women want to be led. But a woman has to vividly see a leader for her to allow. And notice the word I say, allow you to lead her. A woman is not foolish. A woman will have SEX with you, sex with you. And after sex, she, mom, when y'all was having sex, you daddy, I love you. You, you, you the king. You the, yeah, I'm going to follow your lead. And after sex is over, guess what? She act like she ain't never said one of them words. Because women aren't foolish. They're not dumb. They're not dumb. She was in her feelings for the moment. All right, that's vulnerable. But now reality sets in. You can't even lead yourself to anywhere. How do you want the woman to follow you, brother, when you haven't even led yourself anywhere? How? But if I say that, we're going to get a hypersensitive audience. How are you going to expect a woman to allow you to lead, brother, when you haven't led yourself anywhere? You got to give a woman something to see that's leadable. I'm willing, a woman is willing, I will submit and allow him to lead. When I say the word submission, I mean allow to lead. I will allow him to lead me because of the fact that I know he's going to lead me right. Women aren't dumb. And then when they have children, they're even more conscious of who they allow to lead. Because they're not playing with their lives. They're also playing with their children's life. So for my women and men on this live right now, right? And we're having a real discussion. The ones that want to work on themselves. The ones that know that they need work. The ones that's willing to admit they're toxic. And they need to fix these behaviors. Let me give you a round of applause. And the reason why I say this is because in, in retrospect, right? Are you willing to date yourself? You say yes, right? But the, the thing about it is this. Sometimes in life, we forget this conversation. You may feel you are 10, ladies, gentlemen. You may feel you are 10, but there's a different value when it comes to the dating market value. You may feel you are 10 as far as personal love for oneself, but on a dating market, they do not see you as a 10. And that's a reality. Right? That's a reality. Men, we say things like this. I know for a fact another woman will want me. Brother, and let's just be honest. When you're young, right, we overvalue looks to the point where looks can make you make a poor choice. But ladies and gentlemen, and I want to tell my men this, a woman will take a whole four that can provide her a stable life and a whole 12 that she got to take care of. Damn. Let me say this again. Men, a woman, as far as looks, will take a whole four and love them because of the fact why? Because of the fact that he can provide stability. And then you know what a woman does say about the woman? She's a gold digger. No. She knows that she will be protected and she will be comfortable. Right? But a lot of times when we have these conversations, I think we go off the reservation of understanding truth. Right? We don't understand truth. A lot of us live in this false, false fairy tale world. Right? I'm going to give you a conversation real quick. So the other day, I was telling this guy, I said, do men prefer older women or do men prefer younger women? One of the ladies heard me having this conversation with him, jumped in the conversation. She happens to be an older woman. She said to me, it's because they weak, they perverts, and they don't got, they, um, they, they want to control. Ladies, 
I'm going to go on record and say this. Since the beginning of time, right, men have been dating younger women. If you go look at everywhere across the board, men have always dated older, um, younger women, right? In most cases, your grandfather will be older than your grandmother. So I guess your grandfather a pervert. In most cases, your dad is probably older than your mother. So I guess your daddy a pervert. In most cases, you might be in a relationship right now, ladies, with the men older than you. So I guess your boyfriend or your husband's a pervert too. Now let's have a real conversation. That's weird. It's just how it goes. Women tend to mature a lot faster than men, so therefore making them more attracted to men that are older. Men tend to mature later, so if they're pursuing careers in the aspects of their life that make them uh, respected by the opposite sex, which is career, money, and driven and have things as far as success, then a man will double back later and look for a younger woman because of her fertility and her willingness to listen. A lot of times, I hate to say this, ladies, and someone's going to get mad at this. When you date a lot of older women, sometimes, I say sometimes, a lot of women get set in their ways. So a lot of men don't look for them as they get older. And it's the truth. A woman, based on age, still has to have the willingness to be able to be led. It is impossible to lead a woman who don't want to be led. It is impossible to lead a woman who's been leading their life their whole life and genuinely don't believe that they need a man. It is impossible to lead a woman who, who don't see her man as a, 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 a her man. It is impossible to lead a woman who sees her money as giving her a penis. How can you lead a woman who believes her money gives her a penis? A penis. Like, come on. Listen, ladies, and I'm going to say this. Money does not make you a man. Being able to take care of yourself, men and women, makes you an adult. When a person can take care of themselves, whether they're a man or whether they're a woman, it only symbolizes that they've have reached the maturation process. Let me say that again. Ladies and gentlemen, if a man or a woman can take care of themselves, that does not mean that you are superior to anybody. That means clearly you can afford the life that you want to live. Let me say that again. You can afford the life that you want to live. So in retrospect, a man or a woman who can take care of themselves only means that you have reached something called adulthood. So ladies, money do not give you a penis, and men, money do not make you superior to a woman. Let me say that again. Ladies, money do not give you a penis, and men, money do not make you superior to a woman. But in society, standards have definitely changed. People believe that the more money they make, the more of a superior they are. You can have a woman who makes eight figures a year and she could be a horrible leader and understands that she needs to be led. Because when we started this thing called school and we started obtaining degrees, one started being told that because you have a degree, that means you are every bit of the superior. But here's the lie. Obtaining a degree means you have discipline, right? And, and you've learned that particular subject to, in order to receive a piece of paper that solidifies and certifies you in that field, right? But here's a narrative. In the same breath, right, a person could have no logic, no common sense, and no street smarts because all they know is how to do something called book smarts. And that's a reality. But when we have these discussions, we tend to get inferior to truth. Men, because you make more money than your woman don't mean you're a better leader than her. There are women who are ever bit of better leaders than men based on society and how they were raised. Environmental. There are some women who had to literally take care of their homes at very young ages. So they had to learn how to lead. 
And there are some men who are coddled by ladies or mothers, so therefore they've learned how to take the back seat. And as a man, you should be able to identify that. Ladies, if you really believe that you are alpha, alpha female, I think you don't need an alpha, alpha male. Because I'm going to go on record and tell you this. Alpha, alpha males aren't attracted to alpha, alpha females. Let me say that again. Ladies, if you are an alpha, alpha female, right? Men aren't attracted to alpha, alpha females. A man who considers himself an alpha will not fight for his natural role in his home. He is not going to lay in a bed with a woman who believes that she is more alpha than him. But he is not weak. He understands that he has to fight society already. He is not going to come home and fight for his natural right in his home. Come on. But if I say this, I'm wrong, but yet and still the woman that thinks that is because she believes a man is supposed to think like a woman. No. You've read that book, what Steve Harvey said, Think Like a Man. I don't think a lot of women today think like a man, Steve. I think a lot of women think they are men. Damn. And why do I say that? Because you allow economics to come into the equation to the point where you believe that that's what gives you the leader or the ability to be the king or queen. Ladies, and I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this on record. I'm fake crying. Ladies, you will never get a king behaving like a king. And men, you will never get a queen behaving like a queen. I'm going to say that one more time for those who don't want to hear this. Ladies, you will never get a king behaving like a king. And men, you will never get a queen behaving like a queen. Now ask again, are you dateable? Are you dateable? Would you date yourself? Would you, would you really go on a date with yourself and really enjoy it? Yeah, you might be funny. Yeah, you might be humorous. But when it comes down to anything else, what makes a relationship good is how you behave when things are not going the way you want. Now we talking. The gloves, are, but they call that kizzy, the gloves are off. The gloves are off. Can you control your anger, right? Can you preserve your mouth, right? I can learn things about my woman and say nothing because of the fact that it's not that I, I can't say anything. It's the fact that I reserve my mouth because I plan on having something after this. Ladies, if you genuinely plan on having a relationship after the argument, I think you should be mindful of what you say. Verbal abuse is real. It's real. Right? I'm going to give you a quick story. One of my guys, he was dating this woman. She's a good girl. But every time they would argue, she would take off the gloves. And mind, he's boxing her with gloves on. And they're play fighting. She's taking the gloves off and she's putting on brass knuckles. And she's swinging for them fences. Right? So every time she get mad, she would say things to this man that was extremely toxic. To the point where he started building insecurity because he's like, damn, I love her. And she's saying things that's hurting me extremely. But then she'll say things like, if you were strong, you would be able to take my mouth. And I say, no, it's not that he's not strong. It's that you're starting to cause mental illness. You're starting to make this man question himself. And I'm going to tell you something, ladies. In order for a man to be his best, uh, 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 a person that providing and going out to fight the world, the woman should be the one that ultimately helps him by, by, by supporting him, by, by, by loving on him, by, by telling him he can do more. I'm going to tell you something. If you noticed, in most cases, when they speak a love language, right? How come, and I ask this question, how come most men... Love language is words of affirmation. Why? Do you find most men, they need gifts? No, right? Do you find most men, they need time? No. Do you find most men that need um, uh, 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 touching and petting? No. But what most men want from their woman? Words of affirmation, right? Why is that? 
Because you affirm in this man that you're going in the right direction. You affirm in this man that he's doing the right thing. A lot of men tend to like to be told that I love you and I and I and I appreciate you and I and, and I want you to uh, keep doing. You're doing an amazing job. Why? Appreciation goes further with men than money. And I'm gonna tell you why. Watch this. For those who don't who don't want to believe it, a man, right? A man will dump a millionaire for a McDonald's employee who respects him. Let me say that again. A man will dump a millionaire and go date a McDonald's employee who respects him. That's how strong respect is for us, right? But again, if you say the opposite, now a woman will justify, he got me mad. That don't mean no sense, sister, because you got me mad, but I ain't stopped paying bills. You got me mad, but I ain't turned the lights off. You got me mad, but I kept a roof over our head. You got me mad, but I didn't kick you out of my home. So with that being said, ladies, you have to be mindful of the fact that every time you get upset, you cannot justify it with your words that you say to these men. It's toxic. It's toxic. But this is how we behave. And then we say, I am the catch. Ladies, some men aren't catching you is not because they can't catch. It's because you're not worth being caught. Right? Let's say it again. Kenzie, some women aren't being caught. It's not because men can't catch. It's because some men don't want to catch you. Men, some of the queens you think you're worthy of getting don't look your way because some of the queens you believe that the king that you believe you are, she don't see it. The one thing, man, you must understand is you can't talk a woman into seeing a king. A woman has to see it herself. You can't tell a woman to, to value you. A woman has to see it herself. If a woman don't respect you, there's nothing you can do to make her respect you. Right? And this is the reality. If a woman, if you're, let me tell you something. The other day I was talking to my young boy and him and his girl got into an argument. And in the argument, she said to him, I'm going to be honest with you. I can do better than you. And you know what I said to her? And I said to him, I genuinely believe you should let her go. And he said, why? The worst thing in a relationship you can build is something called resentment. If a person believes that there's someone out there that's better for them, I think you should allow that person to go find that person. And the reason why I say this is because in their heart of hearts, the superhero is out there we're looking for them. In their heart of hearts, you're the one that's keeping them from their superhero. So I genuinely believe that you should let her go and never take her back. Never take her back. Because I'm going to be honest with you, if you believe you can do better, my sister, then go do better. And men, if you believe you can do better than the woman you with, then... Do you, my brother, but I'm be honest with you. But one thing about that door, once you walk out, it do not open back up. This ain't no super shop, there's no stop, no stop and shop. You can't go in and out both the whether you go in and out, the door open both ways, right? This ain't stop and shop, sister. The moment you walk out that door, that door is closed forever. Right? We gotta start learning our value. Men and women. And I'm being honest. Ain't no spinning the block. I love that. Let's be real. If we have this conversation, we got to be honest with ourselves and ask ourselves, are we dateable? Would we date ourselves? Right? I think the best version or the best man or woman that you can get is the best version of you. I think when you become the best version of self, right? Now you start putting out energy that, that brings that kind of energy around you. You can't be a toxic person looking for someone healthy. Because all you're going to do is cause that person to become toxic. Right? Let me say that again. You can't be an unhealthy person looking for a healthy person because all you're going to do is make that person unhealthy. A toxic person will conform or change you into becoming toxic faster than you can make a toxic person healthy. Let me say that again. A toxic person will make you unhealthy before you can make them, un make them healthy. 
The harsh reality is most people around negativity will become negative faster than they can fix someone that's negative. It's not my opinion, it's truth. It's not my opinion. It is not that easy just to fix someone, right, guys? We have to have these conversations, but in order for us to fix life, we must have a true conversation with ourselves. But a lot of us don't want to tell ourselves the truth. Why is this? Because society tells you that you get a participation award for even failing. A lot of y'all are participating in relationships that y'all not giving y'all all to. A lot of y'all are participation, participating in life without giving your all to it. In order to be a great mate or be great at dating, you have to make yourself vulnerable. You have to be willing to hear the person's things that they value, even if you don't want to hear it. Okay, my woman come home today. She wants to talk about her coworker. I don't give a damn about her coworker, but guess what I'm willing to do? Chris, Kinsey, Dre, I'm willing to listen to her talk about her coworker. Because in her mind, she wants to talk about it. So as a mate, being a good mate is also communication and the willingness to listen. If you cannot listen, you will never make a good mate. The best mates is one who can listen. And allow their mate to feel like they're being heard. I'm going to say this. A lot of men don't tell women personal things because a lot of women do use it against them when they're upset. Say this again. A lot of men don't tell women personal things because they do use it against them when they're upset. So what happens is now the man stops telling you personal things. And I'm going to tell you, ladies, watch this. I need you to get this one. Watch this. I need you to get this. Right? You see how when a man is not providing, he leaves room for another man to come through the back door? Right? Right? Stay with me. Ladies. Same response. When a man, when a woman is not respecting, she leaves room for a woman to come through the back door. And watch this. If a man isn't paying the bills, right, and not holding it down the way she believes he should be, she leaves or he leaves room for another man to take her spot, right? Stay with me. The same breath, the woman who's not respecting her man leaves room for the woman to come right through the back door. So sometimes, lady, when a man is cheating, it's not because he's a bad man. It's not because he's a bad man. It's because sometimes you, are, you never let him be vulnerable, and he started telling that other girl about his personal life, which led to him ultimately entertaining her. Sometimes some men talk to women not looking for intimacy, bro. You know that? Some men don't talk to women looking for intimacy. Some men talk to women looking for the escape of being vulnerable. Some men have real life pressures. All right, so look, when you have these conversations, a lot of times we get mad at the realities of life. And then we force what we would like to believe on other people. In, in a lot of cases, a man, we have a lot of pressure. Being a man, it's not easy. And I'm, gonna, I'm not giving us an excuse. It's a very thankless job being a father. It is a very thankless job being in a relationship. Father's Day is a joke, guys. Let's tell the truth. It's a joke. Most of my men on my live right now, let's have a conversation, right? Your family expects you to go all above and beyond for Christmas, Thanksgiving, holidays, right? But in return, you get what? A tie, some socks, right? Um, scarf. Tools to fix things around the house for them. Um, what else? In most cases, I'm going to be honest, a lot of men feel very undervalued and underappreciated in their homes. Because society has told you, ladies, that a man is supposed to do this. I'm going to tell you something on record. And I want y'all ladies to hear this. I ain't supposed to do nothing but stay black and die. Because I'm going to be honest with you. If you're telling me that a real man's coming to your life and upped your value and took you to a whole other level, you're talking about he's supposed to do this, then you're sadly mistaken. Because that's the case, then you're supposed to be washing dishes. And you're supposed to be washing clothes. That's how we're going to talk? 
But even if your woman did wash clothes and wash dishes, you should be very appreciative of it. Anything someone do for you, you should be very grateful. You should never minimize things that people are willing to do for you to make yourself feel happy, right? Because the whole heart, uh, the realities of life is if a person is doing something for me, I don't whether care is big, small, or indifferent. If you give me a dollar or a penny or a million dollars, I still appreciate it. Right? Right? And this is what we need to get back to. But I'm asking this question before we get out of here today, guys. Are you dateable? Are you, would you date yourself? Would you date yourself? And I want to see people in my life right now. We got over 200 and something people watching this on the, um, TikTok right now. Would you answer this question? Would you date yourself? Be honest. Someone said, yes, I would. But here's my question. Yes, you would, but why? Right? I would date me. Uh, most people going to lie. But I'm going to be honest with you. Hear what I told you before. A lot of times, we overvalue ourselves in the dating world. And I'm going to be honest with you. Someone said no, but I respect it. You know why we overvalue ourselves in the dating world? Because society said this. A good person is willing to come along and accept all your garbage, and that makes them a good mate. Whether it's a man or whether it's a woman. Society says nowadays, Kinsey, a good woman will tolerate all your garbage. And the sad part is, I'm going to say this on record, and men, you're going to hate me, but call it what you want. A lot of times, women have to eat damn near garbage from a man in order to be looked at as a good woman, or to be looked at as a, a, a married, marriageable, or you will marry her. It's sad when you see a woman has to go through damn near hell with gasoline drawers on with a man in order to, for him to finally see that she's worthy to be married. Damn. That's crazy. A woman shouldn't have to become, be brutally traumatized to the point where she, she feels low to the point where she's like, damn, do this even man even love me or respect me? See, ladies, Y'all base money on healthy relationships, right? I don't like talking about celebrities, but I'm gonna bring up a celebrity relationship. Look at, look at, look at Cardi being offset. Would you say they got money? But they still have regular human problems, right? Offset got caught ch cheating a few times. Cardi B stayed. Ultimately, having it again. And then there's allegations out there. What I'm getting at is this. Money will not change a person's character. A flawed, broke person, person will be an extreme flawed, rich person. A low moral, broke person will be a low moral, rich person. Morals and integrity is not equated to economics. So ladies, I tell you on record, sometimes don't overvalue money because you'll miss out on some of the good men that you could actually build with because of the fact that you tend to believe that money is the totality of how good a man is. There are women right now who are dating very wealthy men who are verbally abused, who are mentally abused, who definitely are in positions where they can't walk away because they have everything to lose because their whole life is codependent on a man. So ladies, be mindful. By chasing money, you're setting yourself up more prone to find a narcissist. But I want to say something real fast too. A lot of times when you talk to women, they see things like men aren't men these days. And I agree with that statement. But ladies aren't ladies these days either. Right? A lot of women want modern men, meaning providers, men that are willing to take care of them, Men that keep a roof over their head, but they, they out here acting like sexy red. Ladies, and I'm going to go on record and tell you this. Men value a woman that respect themselves. And I'm going to go, listen to this. In most cases, and I say this term strong, in most cases, men care about where women have been with their lives. Right? In most cases, women care about where men are going with their lives. Right? And the reason why is because of this. 
a man cares about where a woman's been because at that point, she becomes a representation of him. So when a man inquires about your past is because he wants to know where you've been so therefore you don't misrepresent him, right? So ladies, don't say because he's weak, he can't deal with you. No, you couldn't keep it in your pants. That's why he couldn't deal with you, right? We're going to tell the truth. Men care about where women's been. Women care about where a man's going. And nine times out of 10, we talk about real men. When a man takes over the role of a woman, he plans on leading anyway, so he do not care about where she's going. He more so cares about where she's been. And the reason being is because he's going to lead. The reason why a woman cares about where a man is going is because she plans on being led. So therefore, she has to know where he's going with his life so she knows where she's going to be led, right? And this is a real conversation. But if a man don't understand the roles, then we're going to constantly have problems. But ladies. In order to be dateable, you have to learn who you are. You have to respect who you are. But understanding the most sexiest woman is the woman that won't embarrass you in front of her man or your friends. You know what she does? She bites her tongue. But when y'all get in that car, she lets you have it. I'm not going to lie. In his head, he like, my girl's sexy. My girl's sexy. Because you wouldn't think that's sexy? If you got your girl so mad to the point where she was like, and just walked in, got no, said nothing, walked in the car and let you have it. But she didn't say nothing in front of your mans. That's sexy. We didn't want to hear it, but we respect it more. Right? Because you know she bit her tongue because she respects you. Ladies, men need respect. Women need provision. Understand we're two different minds, two different people. If anybody want to keep up with the podcast, the podcast is on all major platforms. It's called Don't let that go over your head. For the men and women on my live right now, and if y'all want to keep up with the content, it's called Don't Let That Go Over Your Head. Kinsey, post it right now. Write it in. My guy's going to write it right now. If you enjoyed this episode, I got tons of them. We go crazy. It's called Don't Let That Go Over Your Head. And anybody that love my content, go follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok right now. That Q-D-A-B-O-S-S-516. Q-D-A-B-O-S-S-516. We do this each and every single Sunday. I drop bombs. I give out some heat. So I want you guys to stay in contact. Stay on top of this podcast. We're blowing up. If y'all love this content, we're not creating the negative narratives in 2024. We're pushing out healthy environments and how to help each other become greater versions of ourselves. If you're not following me, follow the creator right now. Also, follow my Instagram at QDABOSS516. The Instagram is called QDABOSS516. The TikTok is also QDABOSS516. The podcast streams on every major platform. It's called Don't Let That Go over your head.